Hey everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Deep Cuts on Classic Albums. Today we're going to look at the landmark 1974 release of Robin Trower's Bridge of Sighs. Uh, we're actually this particular one right here, okay? As most of you know, this was Robin's second solo album after he left Procol Harum. Followed the debut twice removed from yesterday. So a 1974 Bridge of Size comes out. It's pretty much his big breakthrough. It would make uh, Robin a pretty notable name for the, the remainder of the 70s, actually. And uh, spawned a number of really, really popular tracks. So, of course, today we're going to kind of go a little deep into the album. We're going to look a little bit more at some of those uh, deep album cuts that maybe don't get as much recognition. But, you know, honestly, this whole album is just top to bottom full of stellar tunes, uh, a few of which he would play live quite often throughout the remainder of his career and to this day, right? Because obviously it's his most popular album. So let's get started, why don't we? So the first track that kicks off the album is the heavy rockin' Day of the Eagle, a dramatic, powerful song with some great, great, well, the whole album's full of great guitar playing from Robin Trower, but more importantly, some really fantastic vocals from James Dewar, or Jimmy Dewar, however you like to say his name. Bass player and lead vocalist, probably one of the most underrated vocalists of the 70s and the early 80s. Just a fantastic singer, great bass player. Uh, Reg Isidore on drums. This That's the original trio of the Robin Trower band. Trower, Dewar, and Isidore. Uh, all of the three of them firing on all cylinders. It's just amazing how that um, Day of the Eagle track just sounds like a band full of five guys. It's just so powerful and rich and hard rocking and just ripping, ripping guitar work. A great kickoff song, probably one of the strongest like opening tracks on any album from that era. Next, we go to the title track. Everybody's heard Bridge of Size a million times. They had Hendrix, a Jimi Hendrix influence, kind of floating through that whole tune. Uh, Trower using all sorts of effects, you know, Wah Wah and the Univibe, and just a just really moody, melancholy song, which became probably his biggest hit and most enduring track. I love it. I think there's better tunes from his uh, canon, but I, I can see why that's like the most popular. Uh, then we've got the kind of emotional, again, moody and melancholy in this place, which is another one of those hidden gems on this album that I think doesn't get enough credit. And it's just kind of like is this slow percolating builder with some really tasty, beautiful blues rock guitar solos from Robin, as well as another fantastic vocal from Dewar. That goes into the kind of upbeat and kind of funky Foolin' Me. I love Foolin' Me. That is just a kind of bubbling, boiling rocker, man. It's bluesy, it's funky, and it's just got some lethal guitar licks. Again, that kind of Hendrix thing simmering under the covers there a little bit. But Trower had his own style and his own sound. And I think that The uh, Fool in Me is like a just a perfect example of everything that Trower brought to the table. That's followed up by Two Rolling Stones. Again, a concert favorite from the man for decades and decades. And uh, just a great, great song that I think is even better on the Trower live album, which would come out uh, two years later. So how about About to Begin? Another one of those little gems on this album that nobody ever talks about. It's just kind of, and it's like, it's so perfect in its like steamy, drippy, dreamy, airy, psychedelic nature. And if you like read the lyrics, the very odd lyrics to this, which you could take a number of different ways. And I think the way that the, the, the tune just kind of drifts along with these great, chord structures from Trower. You can hear every little note picked and this just laid back vocal from Drewer from Dewar that's just kind of dripping emotion, but yet it's understated. So it's like about to begin. What's about to begin? And you read through the lyrics. Is it like an acid trip, a drug trip, or what is it? You know, it's very ambiguous, but very cool, very mysterious. Total, total psychedelic but not that kind of hippy drippy psychedelia. Okay, really, really good underrated song. If you haven't heard or haven't listened to "About to Begin" in a while, go back and a nice, again, a nice, real tasty guitar solo from uh, from Trower. "Lady Love," upbeat rock song, 
again, one of the more popular tunes on this album and another tune that uh, he would play live forever and ever and ever. Uh, again, probably better on the live album, but still great here. And then uh, the last tune, song number eight. Probably next to Day of the Eagle, probably my favorite song on this album, and that's a little bit of sympathy. Another perfect example of a slow build Trower composition. You know, it just kind of builds and builds and builds to a, you know, blazing crescendo with a gut wrenching guitar solo and a fantastic kind of, you know, coy vocal from, from Jimmy Dewar. A little bit of sympathy. It's just fantastic guitar work. It's melodic. It's dripping with blues and, and post psychedelia. Just a fantastic, fantastic way to end this album. And like I said, a, a slow builder that the, the, with a bombastic climax, which uh, Trower did quite well throughout his career. So there you have it. Um, Bridge of Size. A pretty damn near perfect album, and, and you know you could arguably say this was Trower's best album. Uh, he had actually had a run, you know, the Twice Removed from Yesterday album is great. Bridge of Size is obviously legendary. I love the Four Earth Below album probably just as much as Bridge of Size. The live album goes without saying. Long Misty Days is great. You know, some really great albums throughout the '70s. But I think for me, those first three studio albums probably his strongest. But again, he's got just great material, like for you know, for a decade after that. So um, anyway, that's our deep cuts on classic albums. Robin Trower's 1974 release, Bridge of Size. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on the mighty YouTube. So stay tuned for lots more deep cuts on classic albums. Go back and listen to some of this stuff again. Your homework today is if you really, if you never owned the album and really only familiar with songs you heard on the radio, which probably were Bridge of Size, maybe Lady Love and Day of the Eagle, go check out The Fool and Me in this place. About to begin, and certainly a little bit of sympathy. You'll love them. Listen to that Trower guitar tone, guys. It's one of the best ever. He's one of my favorite guitar players of all time. Love his tone, you know. It's just dripping with everything you love about blues rock guitar, man. His use of effects, so great. Wah-wah, univibe, a little bit of fuzz at times, a little bit of delay. It's great stuff, great stuff. So anyway, Bridge of Size. Yeah, that one right there. But no, don't ignore this one. Great album, too. So anyway, enjoy, guys. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.